internship, uh, they really helped. It was like my support group and they helped me like kind of figure things out. And so I have, when I think looking back at that experience, I, I go like, oh, I, since I sucked at it so badly and I tried so hard to not suck, but I was just, I was just in a hole, but I, I it was like, I reached a bottom and I was like, I can't go anywhere but up because I, I've kind of gone through the, I know what's ter like what's really hard for a CG animation for me. And so I felt like after the three months, I was like, oh, now I can really kind of build up from there. But um, I, everyone else got hired except me, by the way. <laughs> so everyone else moved on to Ratatouille or they went to Nemo. And then I was the only one that was like, oh, I didn't make it. So that, that you know, I, I think at that time it hit me pretty bad. and. Um, so I had to just like kind of rethink like what am I gonna do? So I basically uh I had a friend named Gary, he was working over uh uh for he, he knew about a position in Futurama. There was a show called Futurama and they were doing these uh uh DVD movies. And so I, I squeaked past that through his recommendation uh as a, a kind of they used to do this thing called character layout artists. Um, it's like this process between, um, I think, uh, storyboard and and then and then animation. It's basically keying out things and setting up the environment. So I I actually learned a lot. Um, I had uh, really great uh, directors that like took me under their wing and like kind of taught me a lot of stuff during that year. Um, I found out how much I was missing in terms when I was drawing. I thought I was okay at drawing and then my confidence level also went down. <laughs> it was dark. <laughs> they, and, and those guys just love to kind of go, well, you're doing it wrong and look at this. And so I, I just learned a ton just uh, even working in that TV pipeline and then having a deadline, like I had to get stuff done every week. So uh, it was a really good boot camp. Um, and I was drawing, so I was happy doing that too. And then uh, I prep. I, I found out about a uh, um, uh, Disney Animation was having their. That was the first time they did uh, the uh, apprentice program. So in the fall, uh, that following year, I kind of was. I was always kind of doing my own stuff because I was like I. You know, I, I was lucky to have that job on Futurama, but it just wasn't my style. So I just kept kind of doing my blog, posting up my own designs there. And I just collected all the stuff that was in the blog and I sent it over to that um, apprentice program. And so um, I squeaked past in, in that. <laughs> it was very, it was very competitive because like that following year, um, it was, it was a year below me at CalArts. And there's a lot of like, like really rock star kind of, guys and really super talented guys and a lot of them went to work animate on princess and the frog and you know this story but i i was like i had already graduated and worked on futurama so like i was kind of like lucky to hold on to their coattails and get into the thing <laughs> um so i i feel really lucky about like being able to get that opportunity because i feel like a lot of it, it, you know I don't think it would have happened if it wasn't for a lot of like my friend Gary, just like those people I know at school and, and just uh, even during the Pixar internship, like I don't think I could have survived that without, without like my support group. Um, so um, yeah, I, I feel like I, I kind of lucked out getting, getting in there. And then when I got into Disney, um, I had a lot of amazing mentors. Like Jin was also my mentor uh he was amazing and just like there's just so many all these amazing artists that you just kind of soak soak in uh at that time the training program was like uh it, it wasn't as structured as before they so they just kind of threw you in a little bit <laughs> threw you in the deep end and you just had to do assignments um and then uh you know there was a lot of things that i felt like i needed to work on so like working for in tv it was like a really kind of crazy schedule so in future it was a little bit more a little bit more time so I was trying to like basically do everything I needed to do in four days and then and then on a Friday or one of the weeks I was trying to like work on my own 
own, uh, I'd say like right. weaknesses or things that I felt like I needed to build on. And uh, oh, yeah. so I'd, I'd go to figure mm -hmm. drawing or, or just like spend that time try to learn things that I didn't, I wasn't mm -hmm. sure about with character yeah, design. Yeah, that. so. that's awesome. She, yeah, I, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy to hear your origin story. <laughs> I got lucky. I mean, like, this is Mario. Mario's because Mario didn't do the <laughs> Pixar internship. And he, he eventually went into Disney. He's, I think he's still at Disney right now. No, he's still at Disney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Mario, he's just like, eh, I'm okay with the Pixar thing. And I'm like, oh, please. <laughs> get right. me, pick me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. Um, Sheen, I, I can relate to that on so many levels. Um, uh, Jin, um, I know your, your origin story is a little bit different. Um, you were coming from Seoul and um, I read a little bit about, you know, how you, you kind of came to the States and everything like that. Amazing, amazing. Do you want to talk about that? Or like how you- Oh uh, yeah, did? yeah. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Yes, I at the moment I'm uh, kind of fading away, but. Uh, yeah, I started uh, in my career in Korea as a, a cleanup artist, you know, a 2D cleanup artist. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 1986 or 87. So <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know which years uh, I started, but around then, it was a small studio, about 10, 20 people working there. and. Um, and then um, I, I didn't go to art school. Uh, I couldn't go to art school uh, because, uh, uh, because uh, there's some, I have some, uh, the eye problem, the, I have a partial colorblind. So at the time, uh, I couldn't even apply uh, for the art school. So the stupid regulation somehow. I, I don't think it's, it's still exist, but it's, I think it's okay now. But uh, that time it was, it was that. And then, so I couldn't go, even though I, I since I was a little kid, I love to draw and then, you know, I want to be an artist, I want to be a cartoonist, but I couldn't go to art school. So, okay, that sucks, That's, but, Anyway, I, I, so I started economics. I, I don't know that. why. I don't know why I <laughs> economics. <laughs> I, but I kind of wasted four years of my college. Well, not wasted, but I learned something. But uh, anyways, the, uh, after graduate, uh, I still wanted to have some kind of, uh, you know, uh, the passion in here, in, uh, the artistic passion. I want to, I want to find some job, something related to some drawing, art, whatever. But uh, I, I had a hard time because I have a economic, you know, degrees, but uh, no one wants to hire me as a, you know as an artist with an economic degrees. Mm -hmm. But, and one day I luckily, I found an article about uh, uh, the animation industry mm. uh, in Korea. So, mm. uh, and then I just uh, read it and then put the portfolio together. And uh, I, did, I didn't know how to, but somehow I just did all put the old drawings and then start doing some new, new drawings and then put it together and then send all this a few different uh, uh studios that's how i started one of the studios called me uh come on uh, let's have some test then 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 i passed the test that's how i started next right next day they, they asked me to come to the next day uh, 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 after the test, but I it was a kind of a you know hesitant because of the studio, the uh, was not so great. It was some some very old, dirty building. <laughs> you know, I, it wasn't like a nice studio, but uh, it took yeah. about three three days to decide. Okay, finally, okay, I I decided to 
after you know my career. It was the animation was uh, the perfect job for me because of uh, you know I don't have to deal with the colors. I just all I have to do is just a black pencil with a white paper. So that was the the uh, my I thought that that was my dream job. Still, I, I you know still I, I feel like it's, it's just my dream job. So that's uh, the that's how I started my career, and and then uh, so, so until 1989, that's when I moved to Canada. So since then, mm -hmm. yeah. So met your wife, and I met my wife. Yeah, mm -hmm. there for six years, and then um, where did the um, where did the Disney thing? How did that happen for you, Jim? Yeah. Um, in Canada, I in my whole career, I there's a two guys uh, named Glenn. So there's one guy named it's Glenn. Uh, he he his his last name is Kennedy. Glenn Kennedy. He was the 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 studio uh, head, studio owner at the. It's, uh, Toronto, he had a Kennedy cartoons. It's called Kennedy cartoons, and then he, him, and I, I met that while he was in the supervisor, uh, uh, some some animation show, animation productions uh, supervisor. In while he was working in Korea, I met him, and then we became friends, very close. And then when he uh, come back, go back to Canada, and then he asked me to, oh, he, I'm gonna set up the studio in, uh, in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So if I do that, you wanna, you, you wanna come to studio? You wanna come work with me? So, mm -hmm. so yes, I, yes, I love to. And then, and yeah. then after a year, uh, he set up studio and, and then he invited me to, uh, to work there. Awesome. So I, I, I owe him a lot to, you know, to have a chance to work on the, the, uh, the bigger industry in animation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he was, a, he was a, such a great artist. The, he is an animator. How he animated is just a, it's just a, you know, straight to head, you know, it's just a one drawing after one drawing with a single frame. Not the not the few few key drawings and the in between. Just the she's straight you know he's an amazing artist, but uh, he was a bad manager. <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't he the studio was very successful but uh he couldn't you know the, he couldn't manage so the studio financially wasn't uh, stable and then uh, eventually got to shut down. Mm -hmm. That's when I uh, decided to come to the mainland of animation world, so LA. Yeah. Uh, so if, if, if he managed well and then he was successful, the studio was good, and then I probably I don't know. I probably ended up in in, uh, in Toronto for a long time, longer time. But uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and then I applied. At the time, eighty nine, uh, DreamWorks just uh, launched the, their studio, and then it was a very crazy time uh, because DreamWorks, uh, high, you know. They hired a lot of animators from uh, Disney. Disney animators moved the DreamWorks. So Disney needed more animators, more artists. And then there's much higher demanding uh, for the artists. So that's when mm -hmm. I, I, I was so lucky. I feel very lucky and, and blessed. So that's when I uh, applied the uh, uh, DreamWorks and Disney and then DreamWorks uh, sent me the letter. Oh, you, I'm not. I'm not ready. So they reject me nicely. What? 
what? <laughs> and then uh, what? and then Disney called me uh, the uh, okay yeah we are, we are interested in you and then we give another test material <laughs> yeah. and then they they sent me uh, uh, the uh, test material uh, uh, the Captain Hook you ha I have to animate Captain Hook about six seven seconds of the Captain Hook with the dialogue from actual uh, actual uh, the, the movie this is uh, the line is I still remember where did you do you think you're going yeah, he said that, that I have to animate that so I did that I did, you know in a couple of weeks and then said it and then passed and then that's when I moved to how I moved to uh, LA and then become a Disney animator so that's the, that's my uh, my God, uh, show story. <laughs> you said there's there two glands, right? There's two glands. Two glands, but the, the next, uh, the other gland, I, we, we, we'll be talking about him later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's a, they, they, their name is supposed, uh, the initial is the uh, same, GK, right? Uh, uh, wow. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> you did a test for DreamWorks and they said you're not ready. And now um, they're probably... They're probably like, uh, <laughs> <they're> regretting. <laughs> uh, amazing. Jin, whoa. Hey, listen, thank you for sharing that. Uh, oh, man, that's really cool. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, I wanted to get into a little bit of, of just kind of like, you know, a lot of these panels are kind of like helping aspiring character designers, um, you know, formulate their portfolios or like artists even just kind of like up their game, that kind of stuff. So I wanted to, if you don't, if you guys don't mind, get into a little bit of the, um, the kind of, you know, the craft of character design, if you guys don't mind. Um, and uh, I think the first, we can start out with, um, the first question would be, um, and I'll throw this out to you, uh, Sheen, first of like, you know, uh, like what is your thought process in the beginning of designing a character when you get that launch, you know, you have the script pages. Um, and I always wondered about how you, once that launch happens, what is your initial thought process and how do you approach it, you know? Um, how do you attack the blank page? What do you yeah, think? Uh, I try to, I try to think about, well, they, they launch you with like the story, right? And then yeah. who they think the characters are. And then sometimes I'll just ask them, oh, do you guys have any, like, it doesn't have to be the voice actors, but like, you know, and are there any actors or actresses um, that you have in mind? Sometimes that's helpful. So. Yeah. Uh, I'd start to kind of collect a whole bunch of material that might I, I might use for reference okay. um, just to kind of be in the zone. Um, another good thing with the reference thing is like uh, sometimes I tend to repeat myself, you know, like I feel like I you know, after you start exploring for a while, you start to go, oh, I just, I'm just exploring in this one area. And sometimes the reference kind of helps you pull you out of there. Mm. Um, and I usually like it when it's like, you know, some, something that you can observe out in the real world and you kind of bring that into your design. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. the first thing is a lot of reference. And then, and then when I'm actually drawing, um, I'm kind of thinking like, oh, is this good enough, <laughs> basically? It's like, uh, is this good enough to show? Because I don't want to get embarrassed. <laughs> so, uh, and it's like, you kind of don't want to make it look like uh, any other character you did before or anyone, any, anyone else's character. So like, sometimes you'll draw something I was like, oh, that kind of looks like, I don't know, something I did or looks like someone, something just, it wasn't like you were kind of plagiarizing it, but it's just like feels that I feel that way. Mm. So a lot of it's like kind of like 
exploring so you can get rid of those and um you know i, I like to kind of just um the way i draw i like to you know i draw in photoshop a lot now and so um a lot of it is how the lines um just kind of how the lines react to the other lines so like how the lines are placed and like if that is interesting to me or like the proportions are kind of feeling a certain specific like a specific character mm -hmm. so in the back of my head it's not really like uh I, I guess i'm thinking of like you know what's a what's a character i've never seen before what's a character that kind of fits like kind of tells a story and has a lot of personality mm -hmm. um the third thing is like is there any like I try to avoid any drawing, like obvious drawing problems, or is this like, is this something's weird? Like you turn the, you draw something and it's like in three quarter and the, the eye that's farther away from you is like way too small. <laughs> Something really kind of funky. I uh, like, so drawing problems, I try to like, you know, as much as I can, like avoid those. Um, and then yeah. I'm just trying to also get, look for something that's memorable. So like, yeah. You know, when like when you see it on screen, um, you remember it. It's like there's something about it that like makes you stay stay with you. Um, and hopefully I'm trying to get that with the directors too. And so I tend to like go like uh, uh like kind of like a algorithm, like, okay, this is kind of where I feel like they would want. And then but then you can always keep doing these other ones. So but then, so you have that one and then you turn off that layer and then turn on the next one. So it's almost like storyboarding. If you keep doing the same composition over and over, it's like, it kind of dulls the senses. So I try to like change something, like uh, maybe it's the proportion, the head angle, uh, the facial expression, like, and so each one is like, uh, um, it's like a contrast from the one before. So every time you do that, maybe the director kind of notices something, like notices the character a little bit more. Um, so things like that. And then I'll usually kind of have like a whole bunch of diff, I, I like focusing on the face for some reason. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll do a lot of different faces. And then, um, you know, usually like you can kind of get a, it's almost like an actor, like headshot or something like that. Though. And then maybe the director is kind of liking a certain like yeah. head headshot or something. And then usually the 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 full body, you know, is is pretty easy. Like once you get the face. Um, one thing, so, one thing, yeah. really quickly is like um, some huge advice you gave me early on in character design is like you kind of told me of like you know um, animated films they're medium shots for the most part. So yeah, yeah. it makes sense that you would provide um, options for a medium shot of the character, like a bust. So I'm like, yeah, oh. yeah, something like that. Yeah, anything like anything that like makes you feel like, oh, like you can kind of like it's memorable, like, oh, like you kind of want it like so it sticks in the director's head or, you know, another thing is like the, the directors have a, like expectation already. They always like predict what you're going to. I feel like they're going to predict what you're going to provide to them. And so you want to like maybe hit over that expectation. So they're like, Oh shit. Like, <laughs> you know, they're like really excited about it. That's, uh, that's, that's like that's the great. big part of it is like, Oh, you thought I was going to go this way, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go this way or that way, you know? And then you have, if you keep drawing a lot, then, then you have more chance to do that. Um, so, and then you want, you want it to stick in their mind. Like, I guess that's another thing. It's like like memorability. Like after the meeting, they're like, "Oh, I really like that one." And then like I had a good feeling about that because I always feel like the character design process isn't like a logical one. It's not like, "Oh, then you go A, B, C," or it doesn't seem like that for me. It just seems more like a lot of it's psychological and like emotional based. Sometimes if they just have a good feeling, it's not even even if it's not mine, like they might have a good feeling about somebody else's the way that they did something and like that kind of sticks and uh the more you do that for the rest of the team like i think uh the more like successful the design is so that i think that's been my process generally yeah amazing dude
Amazing. Um, uh, Jin, what do you think? Um, what What is your kind of initial, once you get the kickoffs, what do you, what, what's your, you know, after the kickoff, what do you, what do you do right after that? Uh, pretty much same. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Jen, sh Jen should go first. <laughs> but I'll say that. <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, she, you know, so may mention exactly what uh, all, most of most of designers, I think uh, their uh, processes are but, uh, more sane, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, me, me, me too. You know, it's yeah. like, uh, I, I, you, I have to research a lot, and then, and then uh, someone, I think someone said, I think it's this is Glenn again, uh, Glenn, Glenn King this time, Glenn King. Not and Glenn Kennedy. Kennedy. No, it's Glenn. Not King. Glenn Kennedy. <laughs> Sorry. Glenn King. Yeah, he. I, if I'm right, I, I it says uh, so, um, the design is uh, character design is uh, something like uh, similar to uh, the uh, the uh, sculpting. There's a one huge block of the stone or material, whatever, and then you know the Higgs, uh, you know the the sculptor see the 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 figure inside the, the big black thing, right? And then he just uh, chip it out until he finally get the statue. The, the, yeah, I think that's, you know, that's pretty much uh, true. Yeah. So like uh, at the casting director, you know, the, the, there is a, a movie script and then there is a uh, characters and then casting directors find the, 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 uh, the actors to, who can play? Who who is right for the that character? Is uh, I think as uh, uh, character designers is uh, the same as you know doing the same role as a casting director in live action movies. Yeah. So you have to we use the drawings. We have to keep draw drawing, and the, until you find the right character. Uh, <clears throat> Which is uh, described in the, the script or 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 directors uh, the you know want so you, some characters we yeah we we provide about hundred different drawings you know it's it's, it's, it's not the, you know as she you, you she, Bob you know so we we do is we we do not do, do crappy drawings but it's a uh, the director is just rejecting because the, the character is not the uh, yeah, drawing is not the you know the character they want. Uh, mm. So mm. until the last moment, the last drawing, we show and then yeah, this is uh, yeah, the, we, this is this is it. This is a character. So yeah. Mm. So yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. I think that's important to like to know you know because like when you're a student you're like you're just kind of doing stuff for yourself or for your friends or something like that but then when you're working you know as a designer you're trying to problem solve for some for lots of different people but like you know, it might not even be the drawing is like a bad design it's just like it might not it might not be the right one that the director has in mind so yeah i think I, I, that was like a big you know, for me, like a big, like, like a learning process of just like, oh, like, you know, I might like this one or like that one, but they have, a, yeah, you know, they might have a different thing in their head. It's yeah. because no one, no one understands the uh, better the story than uh, directors. Directors right. understand the characters better than, you know, us, you know, me uh, as a character design. So they, if I yeah. think, oh, this, 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 look, this drawings, this design is, looks better than this design I did. Uh, maybe directors like this uh, better. Yeah, but no, the directors choose. Sometimes directors choose 
uh, you know, the designs, the drawings, which is, uh, I think in my opinion, oh, this is better design, but they choose the, this one, but, but these are the, the, the designs, they see the characters in the design, so. Interesting. What I think. Yeah, yeah. Sheen, what do you think? Do you have anything to add to that? Um, uh, yeah, it's just like, it, you know, sometimes you, you could be totally off. And then, you know, sometimes you need a break too. Like, um, like you yourself as designer, like you can't crack the, what the director wants. And sometimes it's good to have other people do, you know, their own passes to it. And uh, you learn a lot too. You're like, oh, okay, that, that person did approach it this way. And mm -hmm. something in there that uh, it's reacting well to the director. And yeah. there's a lot of like, um, oh, what's great is if you're in the meeting, physically there with the director you kind of see their face and they're, like, you know, they're nice they're gonna, they're gonna say they're gonna be very professional and yeah. very polite but you like you see in their face the thought process of like you know and yeah and you as a designer you're just sitting there and then you know like kind of trying to dissect their face and you're like yeah oh. and you try to just kind of find I the truth ever I you ever sat in a meeting and not look at the work at all and just look at the director's face? Oh, yeah. I mean, I do that all the time without... Does every, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure everybody does. I'm like, well, which one does he really like? <laughs> <laughs> I know he's, he's saying all these sentences, but, like, you're trying to find the subtext, right? Right, right, right. So you're just kind of looking at him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, her. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny, man. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Because you knew what you did, so it's already on the wall. You're not looking at your work anymore. You're looking yeah, at yeah, yeah, yeah. like a part of it is like you kind of like not take it too personally, or like I mean, you, you did put a lot of effort into it, but a lot of it is like, well, it's you can't really understand what whatever that person really right. is going to react well to. So, right. um, yeah, the, the, you just try to make everyone like as you know do the best that you can. Yeah, of course, man, of course. Um, th that was great, guys. And um, I, wanna, I wanna move on a little bit. Um, and this question is for uh, Shiyun. Um, and uh, I always wanted to kind of talk to you about this. And, uh, but um, I think from when I came into Disney, your work always kind of had the sense of, um, it looked like it was done really effortlessly and easily and your your work when I came in uh, I was like he's, he's making it look so easy but I, I I do know that you do a huge amount of study and I would always see you downstairs in the library reading books and that kind of stuff and um, I you know all that to say of like you know when you are putting out those character designs it looks easily done but I know there's so much study and research behind it and hard work behind it. I mean, you showed me sheets where you're drawing a hundred thousand eyes, <laughs> milk call eyes. And I was like, what the? <laughs> sorry. Um, but uh, all that to say, I think, you know, can you speak to the, be be the behind the scenes work that you do to, um, um before you get into designing and you know like uh, what that means to you like i think yeah yeah um i mean i always like the um you know all the artists at disney like especially milk call like i just remember a quote that's like uh the easiest way to draw something is like you know uh you know as much about it as possible uh so you don't have to look at reference or something like that, or um, right. the fastest way to draw something is to know what you're drawing or something like that. Like that was a quote, I think. That always stuck with me. I was like, yeah. but well, that's how you're supposed to do it, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, and it's more enjoyable that way too, because you're like, oh, you're also learning something, like just on an intellectual level. You're like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. that's, like, that's how the thing works, oh. Mm -hmm. um so like uh for maximus i was just i did not know how to draw horses i was really scared of it and so um, <laughs> i was i i just read a lot of books and then um you can download youtube videos now 
where you can stop frame through the thing and yeah you can kind of and then there's all these like sports mechanics books of like huh. uh how people run like where the yeah. gate different animal gates uh yeah. and all that stuff like kind of and it was just like from reading all these people like you, you know mill call and then mark davis would just say like stuff like uh like you need to know about weight and like how the animal like how the animal moves tells you how why the skeleton is designed a certain way mm -hmm. um and i guess uh i guess i i didn't want to look stupid like <laughs> when it looked yeah. like i i didn't want to i i i mean there's i'm sh looking back and i'm sure there's a lot of stuff that like i was like oh i wish, wish i kind of knew yeah. what i was doing but i didn't like there was a lot of uh hand-drawn animators like Jen and like there, there's at princess and frog there's all these crazy hand-drawn guys and i was like damn they're gonna look at my design and go like <laughs> this guy did not do his homework and you know here here and here like that doesn't make any sense <laughs> and you, you really like notice that with the animal stuff because it's like oh if you get a little bit off it they're gonna just you know and those guys that animated the damn thing like james baxter like this if you see spirit you know he knows he knows horses so uh, uh, part of it was like, well, if I want to design something and, you know, to have other people animate it, like, you know, you kind of want it, you know, as much, you put as much effort into it, like you did some homework behind of it. So, um, there was know. a, I, I don't know if you remember this, Sheen, but like, I, I remember you told me once, um, that like, if I'm going to be a professional and do this for a living, I owe it to the studio to um, be the best character designer I can be. Um, if I'm going to get into this um, kind of uh, discipline, like I, I, um, I, there's a responsibility for me to hold my weight. And that meant a lot to me too. I'm just kind of like, well, I mean, like if you're going to call yourself a character designer, you have to do the behind the scenes work. And that's kind of something I always admired about you too, of just kind of like the study the real hardcore study um, and yeah. it, it kind of shows itself like in your design. I'm sure there's other ways to attack it. Like, too, <laughs> like maybe you don't need to be that obsessive about it or there, there's so many, there's probably different ways to like go up there. But then I like in my mind, I was like, well, I just want, I, I guess I want people to at least kind of see that I, I, I put some effort into it. Like, uh, doing it and uh even if they don't see all the little sketches because i'll do these sketches where it's like i know nobody's gonna see it and probably nobody's gonna judge it but like just me drawing it like helps me understand a little bit more uh and it and and you start getting addicted to it and uh you, you know I, there was a project where i didn't know how the crab you know crab mouths they're like the most have you seen a crab mouth like it's they're not like this there's no jaw like this it's like this thing that opens up like this and then there's like layers like this and i was and um i was you know i was thinking about that i was like i gotta do the homework and uh and so you you, you do google search and you go to these science there's like these science blogs where they they took photographs of the thing of the mouth of each part like each like arm and then each section of the thing and then you, you it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle you, you like you draw that one then you draw it and then and then you see the videotape and you scrub through it and you go oh. okay i think it's that that one and then <laughs> there's these ones that go like this and uh it's pretty fascinating um <laughs> and then and then you go through that process and then the next time you, someone asks you to draw a crap i'm like I got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Holy moly, that's awesome, man! Yeah, I, but I hate, I hate, I hate crab mouse though. Like, <laughs> disgusting. That's so disgusting. <laughs> but they're beautiful, beautiful and disgusting. I will say, uh, uh, team, amazing. Um, <laughs> But Jen, I wanted to ask, um, I wanted to ask you, and I, I always ask you this every time I see you, but um, what, what do you think, uh, Jen, what aspects of your experiences in 2D animation do you think have helped your character design process today? Um, you know, two different disciplines, um, how do you think they kind of like um, 
work together um, and, and, and what, go ahead, sorry. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know, actually, uh, yeah. uh, as a 2D animator, it's, it, 2D animators, uh, you know, they, they, actually they are trained people who, who, who see the, uh, the drawings, the flat, 2D flat drawings in, in 3D world, right? Mm -hmm. So even though you, you draw one angle, you're always thinking uh, what's, uh, what's the structure behind this, uh, the, uh, this line, be, behind this uh, angle. So, yeah. so they see the 2D drawings in CG form. Mm -hmm. So, they, you know, so, so those things that maybe, I'm not sure, but uh, maybe I'm thinking, oh, in, especially in now, these this days, uh, so CG movie, we are, all we do is the CG movies. Mm -hmm. So those uh, the experience as, uh, as a 2D animator, maybe that helped me in, in the, the, the become a designer, uh, do my job as a character design uh, uh, in a CG movies. Mm -hmm. So that we, I, I provide a lot of a turnaround expressions, you know, the turnaround bodies for the modelers. Mm -hmm. So that maybe that aspects, uh, the, uh, maybe that, that helps me a lot. So mm -hmm. yeah, I could say that. So, and also, yeah. uh, Jin, with the expressions too, right? So like when I was at Disney as a 3D animator, every mm -hmm. 3D animator had your 2D expressions up on their mm -hmm. cubes, mm -hmm. you know, of just how far you can push the expressions. Mm -hmm. So I think that's yeah. a big, big thing as well. Yeah, the, the, I learned through from, of course, I learned it from uh, a lot of 2D animators uh, uh, in this, at Disney. So. Mm -hmm. My God, it's, uh, when, I, when I just got here, there were a legend of the, you know, all this animation world so the, the, surrounding me. So I learned things from them. And yeah. then another one is uh, all these uh, materials, all these uh, reference, uh, the, the materials from old Disney archive. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to uh, Disney, uh, the uh, ALL, uh, Animation Research Library. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first about five years, three, three to five years when I was here, I used to go there a lot and then ask them, to, oh, it's, give me this scene, give me this scene, give me the, this, uh, the mother sheets. And then we made uh, tons of copies. And then I studied that. And then they had a... Uh, a lot of these uh, bothers is it's full of uh, you know expression stuff so i started yeah. those yeah and um awesome yeah and then uh, yeah that that's that's how i uh uh how i do it i uh, how i learned uh, my uh, my job can i say really quickly if i can tell a, a really quick story when i was mentoring under Jin um for like a little while um, I was like, hey, I'm having trouble with these expressions on the character and that kind of stuff. And then so he, um, I went into his cube and he had the animation desk. And then he'd, um, you know, the, all those like um, Elsa um, and Anna just sort of expressions and that kind of stuff that are famous. And like he would be like, oh, okay, let me know. Um, um, I'll show you how I do it. And then he kind of like put the paper down. And he was really roughing out and flipping, flipping the paper, really roughing out and flipping the paper and that kind of stuff. And I was like, why is no one else out here to see this? This is amazing. And, uh, and I think what I took from that too is kind of like that animation um, sort of mentality of like flipping the paper, squash and stretch, uh, just kind of like forms turning. But in that moment, I felt like I felt like the pure gin 2D animator, like rough with a, you know, with a pencil and everything like that. It was super inspiring, man. Um, hey, uh, yeah, that was really. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, uh, once, 
once the initial uh, the design is uh, pretty much done, uh, and then and then goes next step like a the, you know one drawing one one specific angle uh, drawing, and then put put the drawings on the the desk like the animation disk there, and then put the another another paper on top, and then from then and then it's it's basically it's animating. It's just a just animating. It's not. It's more like a. It's right. not. Yeah, yeah. It's just animation. And for me, I think I feel like a, a you know, like a Shion. Maybe Shion is more like a pure uh, character designer. It is all. This comes naturally. So <laughs> me, I feel like I'm more hybrid kind of. You know, mm -hmm. the animation and the. the Design uh, some somewhere in between. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, no, 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 no. No. Uh, no I'm, I'm a poser. <laughs> I'm just trying to do uh, like that. All, all I'm gonna say is when I saw Jin perched on his chair doing this, it was like a maestro. <laughs> it was like a. It was like a. I, I, I don't know what it. I was like. Why isn't anyone filming this? But he sat on the end of his chair and kind of, woo. Um, but I wanted to say, uh, moving on um, um, to both of you guys, uh, Jin and Shiyun, um, this might be a loaded question, but like what in your opinion makes for successful character design in the kind of context of your show? What do you think, Shiyun? Oh, for, uh, so each show is very different. Uh, like successful, uh, huh. I guess a more specific thing would be like, um, uh, so, so maybe there, uh, depends on what you're hired for. So uh, if you're coming in, maybe starting out and you're kind of a junior designer, you're usually having to work under someone mm -hmm. who's a more experienced character designer, who's kind of doing more of the, the mains or, he kind of has a bigger role on the show. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to fit your style a little bit so that it complements um, the main designer's work, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I would do that too. I would do like crowd characters, like, you know, characters like uh, the mom and dad for some, uh, for the main characters or yeah. just like incidental characters, uh, like anything, like whatever they're going to throw at you, you're just trying to, so the success for that is just, just making that feel like cohesive with like what yeah. the style of the show is for. And then, um, you know, trying to problem solve things in a way that like kind of is most economical in terms of like man weeks um and also like kind of getting people excited uh about yeah, the design yeah. that's like a big part of it yeah. um and uh you know trying to facilitate anything like like any communication for the design for whatever that they need you to do because part of it is like like you have to give it to another person like it's not like you're doing the whole thing movie by yourself you have to like work as a team so whatever you're doing in your section, you eventually have to give that to a bottler or, you know, another designer or, you know, there's so many people that work within it. So, um, you know, if they need references for anything, if they need other drawings with different angles, if they're asking you for that, you're going to try to do your best to do that. So that's part of the success thing too. Um, and then I'd say it's like, that's like that for even if you're like the the more senior character designer too it's like yeah. you know it's like to get the director excited about your design and uh and also like that you you feel like you did your best that's part of the success too it's like oh i did my best and you know th that feels good too um and then also making sure that um you know if there's if there's any questions about it if there's anything confusing that you're there to like help uh, communicate it too yeah. um, in terms of drawings or just even talking to people and then um, uh, you know because part of it is like you know part of it is the drawing where it's like well like kind of what Jen said I mean the 2D animation skills are so relevant because like the sometimes 
a modeler might be able to just look at one drawing and just kind of get what, what you're doing, or he might be like, uh, he or she might be like, just be like, oh, I don't, you know, I actually don't know how it looks like at this angle. Like, could you do a draw over, or, you know, could we figure it out together? Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big part of it too. And, um, you know, I find like sometimes like, you know, maybe there's like the overall design looks good, but then you start have to doing the hands or like the feet and like little detail stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, part of that is just trying to figure out how you're going to stylize certain like little uh, details like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, part it's like, you know, the the work is really important, but also you how you um, problem solve together as a team with the leadership. Sheen, um, I'm so glad um, that you brought that up. And Jin, maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit of like, you know, you know, as a student character designers, it's just kind of about us and our voice. But when you get into the studio, it's more about working as the collective, right? So Jin, you know, you're, you're doing designs that would um, help the, um, the uh, disciplines after that come after us, right? So that's a big thing of, um, you know, just kind of like working in a studio and working on a production. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, I think a lot of people uh, don't know quite uh, exactly uh, the whole uh, the process of the big this uh, big studio. Yeah. So a lot of case uh, the one final design of uh, of the characters is not done by uh, the one person. So it, it, it you know so a lot of person it, it, a lot of people so put their hands on the one character. Mm -hmm. I I do my uh, for initial and then go to another person. They uh, they take it and then they go over or to take another pass or show to directors and then it come back to me again. So it, sometimes not all the time, but sometimes they do this. So. Uh, so you have to put your ego aside and you know you know what i mean so uh yeah if you if you just really love you your drawings or you know designs then sometimes uh you get hurt you know you're uh, so so uh so collaboration is the, the uh, most important uh, factor in the big huge studio uh, yeah. the yeah. productions. Yeah. Right. And um, what else? Um, no, that's great, man. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, kind of closing out, guys, uh, I think we have a few more questions from the Discord, but um, uh, how are you guys doing on time? Uh, Jin and Shiyun, if you guys have to have to bail soon, or um, that's totally cool. Um, okay. Uh, okay, I can just well, questions on myself. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so I think this is an important one. Um, so getting into helping people kind of break into um, character design, you know, aspiring artists break into character design. Um, what do you what do you think? Um, artists should be keeping in mind when building a character design portfolio. So you guys see a lot of character design portfolios. What stands out to you, Shinyun and Jim? Like when you see one, you're like, yes. You know, what, what's happening there? Like, like what, can, what can aspiring artists do, you know, to make their character design portfolio stand out? What do you think? Oh, all right. Uh, all right. <laughs> she just Jin. Yeah, yeah. Jin go first. Jin go. Okay. Um, not like a maybe a small studio is a different story, but a big, uh, so like a big studio, we have a we have a um, many designers uh, there, so the each each one have their own style. 
wise. So, uh, so uh, if you if uh, you have a very unique your own style, yeah, that I think that's the the, the that could be the best. Mm -hmm. So if you know the studio don't don't have reason to hire uh, the you know similar style artist who already we already have one here. But, mm -hmm. So there's, it doesn't make sense. So if you have a, your very own unique, so you can try so, so much, uh, you know, different styles that I think that that could be helpful. And then of course, uh, of course you need to, uh, to, to how, you know, you need to know how to draw. You know, a lot of people, a lot of time, I, when I look at this portfolios, uh, I see uh, the live drawing, you know, the part more. So like uh, mm -hmm. sketches and uh, sketchbooks, mm -hmm. uh, rather than the uh, actual, you know, mm -hmm. nice colored, uh, rendered uh, the images. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I look at the, the, the live drawings uh, more. So if you, if uh, just uh, if he has a, uh, you know the base you know, yeah. the skill of that yeah. so we uh, you, can, you can grow from there if you don't have as many people don't show that uh, live drawing uh, the, the images uh, sketchbook images mm. but i love to see those more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah jin does that speak to uh draftsmanship um draftsmanship i when you keep drawing, it comes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it, it, when I see my drawings uh, to 20 years ago, <laughs> 30 years ago, it just looks like a crap. <laughs> but uh, you just keep drawing and then uh, it, 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 it'll come, you know. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Chin, what do you think? Yeah, I uh, pretty much agree with. Jen, mm -hmm. yeah, what he said, what Jen said. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, been in, like in some reviews, or it's like, you know, you kind of, I guess because we're seeing so many and so many people are kind of like doing similar things, you kind of see like, like let's say if everybody's drawing uh, New Yorkers or something like that, like the same subject matter right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everyone is doing designs people designs that are new yorkers mm -hmm. you start seeing like a hundred of those mm -hmm. then you start seeing like like the the, the superficial level of it it kind of yeah just goes away just because you're seeing so many of it and then you start realizing oh like these little things in there that kind of show you that person really knows how to draw well like Right. Like little things of like the hands or like the feet or yeah. where they put the uh, the shapes of the the legs or you know um, or also you see like mistakes too like oh they put the collarbone in this really weird place or they put the you know they put a leg in front of uh, a bot like they put the hand here they put the hand like this and then it's like in a weird position you you know like because just it it. It, like there's some things where especially the joints or you like um you know you want your somewhat like some kind like if it's kind of humanoid you want the elbow to kind of go like be able to be like going like this right because yeah. you want them to scratch their head or something like that mm -hmm. but if their elbow is too short then they can, you know it just looks a little bit awkward like little things like that and then you start like kind of seeing if that person's like really you know ready because um uh you just you just start noticing these uh little things that you know you know putting the hand behind the back or putting a leg some form in front of another and then yeah. you kind of know they haven't thought through through like what's behind right. the volume or they have baggy clothes on and uh <laughs> <laughs> if you did an x-ray vision under there the body would be like really kind of <laughs> odd yeah oddly positioned you know yeah. Or the you know the drapery is like just you know, 
little simple things with just like where the lines are on the folds or something like that. Right. You go like, oh, right. that's a really odd. Right. Like if you were to actually right. really make that t-shirt, that's like a really odd proportion. Just things like that. I think, uh, I, and it goes back to the figure drawing thing that Jen's talking about because uh, a lot of people just jump into the more like kind of the more stylized version of things. And, and yeah. I, I understand that because it's memorable. It's like, you know, it's, it's kind of exciting and it kind of like tickles your brain. Like, like yeah. it's very appealing to look at. But then um, I think uh, the, the hard part is that just like, it, it was for me, this is from my experience. Cause I, you know, I'm like that. I was like that maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I was more dealing with like the more superficial aspects, but then I was, you know, as you're, you know, as I got the opportunity to keep growing is like, those were the things that were kind of stopping me from growing more yeah. is like, I just didn't know how the wrist worked or I didn't know how the knee actually really looked like or how the thigh looks like or how the back of the ankle looks like and uh, how the, you know, just there's so many little million things like how the hand works, like all these like little things that, you know, maybe, uh, um, Maybe for some people it's hard to see see that, but then like how important that is. But like right. like let's say you're um I don't know, maybe you're doing a draw over for an animator and you know they need your help on maybe pushing the pose a little bit. And part of that is you don't wanna like mess up their fucking pose and like make it look janky, right? Like you wanna like strengthen what they have and you know, just you know, just keep keep the acting idea in there, but then but then if you didn't practice how to draw hands very well, or the wrist very well, it's not very helpful for, for them, you know? They're just like, right. well, we can't get the rig to look like that. It's just or right. something looks broken. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I always kind of go like, because um, for some weird reason, they had me like train a lot of the, the, the incoming designers recently. And I was like kind of a, that was a tough thing, man. Like, <laughs> to be honest, like, <laughs> I had to, I don't know, I, I had to train, I had to train some the newer designers and, you know, they all had a really cool style. And then, uh, you know, I think some of them complained about me too. I have to be honest. I was pretty hard on them because I was like, well, you got to learn this stuff. So I basically had, I, I think I forced them to just basically get, you know, those 40s plastic Disney 40s designs like that are based on like volumetric kind of stuff um uh, like Jan Johnny Appleseed I I had s some designers do that and uh, mm -hmm. it was really difficult for them it's really hard because you kind of have to you know like what Jen was saying you have to see it as a 3D thing and not only that you have to uh keep the proportions accurate so it feels like Johnny Appleseed but then you can't twist their arm in a way that just looks like, I mean, it might be volumetric, but if the, if you don't know your relationships between the joints, it's just gonna look like off, like really wrong. Like the, the arms twist it in a weird way, or if the arm's holding onto another arm and it doesn't feel like there's volume there, it looks like he's holding it like this rather than this. <laughs> yeah. Like those things are like, uh, it's just hard and, and so, uh, uh, you know, it's easier to do that like before you go before you go into the studio environment because there's all this stress of like, you know, we got to get this this uh, asset approved or something with the, with the schedule or, or um, so there isn't time for you to ramp up your drawing skills so that you can kind of meet those challenges. Yeah, uh, it's easier to like kind of do that stuff mm -hmm. before school. So mm -hmm. I even say like like you like just it might be a good thing that maybe the poor like some people like even for me like I, I didn't get in to the Pixar thing or you know maybe I wasn't ready for this opportunity like um right like it's hard but like maybe it's like kind of helping you uh, maybe there's some truth to maybe wh whatever it was that maybe it stopped you is like maybe it's you know, for me, it was always like, well, I kind of need to go back to the basics and make sure, like, I know what I'm doing. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. either volumetrically, yeah. it needs to be consistent or yep. something with the joints or, like, 
like I don't know enough about the hands or the knees or mm-hmm. little, little things like that. So um, I, I, I would, that's something I would recommend the, um, the newer artists that, you know, you know, they, maybe they don't have opportunity to go to CalArts. It's freaking expensive. I think it's like $50,000, like for one year. For like <laughs> so for, imagine four years, that's like $200,000. Mm-hmm. God damn. Um, so, uh, you know, I would just get that uh, Preston Blair book, you know, like, and, and that's what I was forcing some of the designers to do. They get those classic 40s designs and kind of do what Jin's doing, which is like flipping the paper and like kind of like seeing the drawing as a sculpture, you know, a little bit and, you know, doing poses with them. I, I think. Uh, if they if they do that stuff earlier on, and and I feel like at like in the hand drawn days, you started as like a uh, like a in betweener and yeah. then assistant yeah. animator and yeah. then animator, and then there was this, the supervising animator. Just they really did the final final design that you see on the screen. Right. So I I, I think some of that training is kind of lost nowadays. It just like just feel like after school they just expect you to all of a sudden be this character designer and like you know so so i wish there was a little bit of a uh, a drawing curve but if you're there like without school like you can't go to cal arts or maybe you're like living in another part of the world where it's hard to get access to that yeah uh, i would just even get that like preston blair book it's pretty cheap and then just to like do like even if you, you can always there's nothing wrong with separating your style and you just go like, okay, I'm just going to practice this part of it. And yeah. don't yeah. worry that your style is going to change. Like okay. you, you can always do that, but on a separate, like maybe find a separate time to just like figure out like this volumetric thing, figure out this joint anatomy thing. And then, and then when you do get that opportunity, you just, just kind of s- soar really fast. Uh, there's this girl designer named Ami, I think she animated at Ghibli a little bit before she came into Disney. And then now she's just like, she's just like this rock star. Cause it was like, well, well, just now that you know how to draw, you could just do like, I'll just get out of the way. It's almost like, let me get out of the way. You know, like you could do a lot of this stuff. And, and it was so much easier. Like, you know, when you're working with someone like that, you just like want to keep giving them assignments. Cause they're just like, they're hitting all these home runs. Um, so that's, I think that's the point of view of a lot of the leadership on the show is like, oh man, if you can really be a rock star in this, like, let me get out of the way. But like, most of the times it's like, oh, these, it's like these little things are just like, oh, the fingers and the volume or, you know, uh, sometimes. Uh, let me, let me, let me right. ask you this, Shun. I'm sorry to interrupt Ben. Um, uh, and, uh, we'll start out with you, Shun. I, I asked you this before, um, like for student portfolios, a big question that I get a lot is like, um, is it better to show a lot of different styles in your character design portfolio or just have that kind of one Shiyun Kim style, whatever that means, or, or just kind of like a, like a, um, like a specific style of just like one artist. And because I think that's a lot of like what, character designers are kind of asking like kind of breaking in is it better oh. to be um kind of all over the map or is it better to just have that uh, i think it depends on probably like what uh studio you're um, I, for, from my my take is like it depends on the studio so for like uh like disney dreamworks or pixar i'm, I'm guessing mm-hmm. like uh they probably want like more like a volumetric kind of really classical drawing like foundation mm-hmm. and uh you know i i would show more styles that are kind of showcasing that a little bit more just because like the nature of what they do is they translate that drawing into a model like a 3d model yeah. um so they're probably looking for more of that um i think for certain tv shows they're a little bit more stylized um but there is like solid construction behind them too so um yeah i would just uh you know yeah uh, i remember you told me you told me she and you're like i don't care just give me good drawings 
<laughs> yeah, I think like good drawings, you know. Uh, there's certain, I, I have to say, like there's certain styles that are like, you know, more prone to more, um, the less of a spectrum of poses, if yeah. that makes any sense. Mm. Like there's certain limitations within the style on purpose. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're limited in the way that they can pose the characters. Mm -hmm. So I would, you know, I would tend to look at more what the studio is doing. And because the, the stuff no. that Disney and Pixar and DreamWorks are doing, they're a little bit more For sure. like For sure. the spectrum of poses. Like they can like angle the head like this and they can pull the shoulder back here or they could drop it and, you know there's little things like that or the wrist that there's more flexibility here like uh things that you can showcase that because certain styles i have to say is like it's on purpose like you know family guy or you know even futurama too it's like yeah. there's there's certain limitations like they they do this thing where the simpsons is like it's like it looks like this, and then three quarter. It go, it's the eyes start going like this, and then whoop. <laughs> it, I think that's cool. That's a cool like yeah, yeah. like way to animate yeah. things. But you know, that's a certain style, and you just have to kind of realize that. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, no, no, I get it. I get it. Totally get it. Um, I wanted to. Um, I I know you guys' time is short. Uh, let me know if you guys have to head out, but um. We got some questions from the uh, Discord, which is kind of like the Rise of Animation um, uh, channel. Shout out to the Discord. Hey, everybody. Um, but uh, the first one um, is from uh, Meg. And she, um, this is a great question, but um, she asked, do you have any advice on how to accurately capture characters from different cultures and races, whether historical or modern? Um, how do you guys approach that um, when you guys are um, like faced with that task? What do you What do you think? Mm -hmm. um, I'll start out with Jin. <laughs> Jin, what do you think? Um, Could do you, you repeat the question again? Yeah. Um, so, do you have any advice, Jin, on how to accurately capture characters from different cultures? different races, whether oh, okay. it's historical or modern. What is your process when you're faced with that task? Like I said earlier, there's no secrets. This is research. Yeah. Research and study. And that, that's mm -hmm. the only way to, to get done. Yeah. Yeah. So. Jin, well, what, are you, what are you looking for when you, when you do that research? Are you kind of looking for the I mean, I remember you did a talk on Deepix of just kind of like how you look for the different um, kind of uh, like physical traits or, you know, uh, you know, anything about like whatever you're researching, how that's different. Um, but yeah. Oh, well. Uh, oh, no matter what it what kind of uh uh i don't know no matter what kind of design you do mm -hmm. the, the what kind of shape first we looking for the the interesting very interesting shape entertaining shape yeah uh, first yeah and then there are a lot of other things like uh, you know I I like the simple simple design simple characters yeah you know yeah so uh, you know by the way the Baymax is one of the best design you you, you did <laughs> Baymax is one of the because it is so simple not not you know it cannot be better you know it cannot simpler than that it's a, it's a simple character. Uh, but still, um, uh, you have to make all these. Uh, oh, what happened to Bobby? Is he? Um, <laughs> can, he see, uh, can can you say something, Bobby? No, Bobby's offline. <laughs> anyway, uh, simple line and uh, simple designs, and but. It has to be, you know, 
the uh, what do you call that? Uh, the uh, appealing, you know, appealing is the mo uh, ultimate uh, the goal uh, for the uh, uh, character designers. Mm -hmm. So you have to make, uh, even though this is a you know, the villain, it has to be appealing uh, characters. So what no matter what is what race or you know that's that's a you know that's my goal it's a make a make a characters appealing so yeah yeah you agree yeah yeah i agree with jen like it's like uh you, you want uh something interesting you're bad uh something memorable and i and 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 uh i don't think one race is uh you know, there's just one way of what interesting is. That's constantly getting flipped and changed all the time. You know, I was working on another project and, uh, you know, there's just so many different, different versions of interesting within the spectrum of all these different ethnicities. It's even hard to say like, oh, one ethnicity looks a certain way too. You know, as you go through the research, you'll find like, hey, that person from that ethnicity actually looks more like this person from this other part of the world, their, their face shape or something about their nose. It's, it's, it's really amazing how similar people are, even from different ethnicities and how different they are. So, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's like the, the research thing is so important because uh, yeah. without research, you're just going to, you're just going to like rely on uh, biases or, or just, you know, caricatures that someone else did. And uh, yeah, I, I think that the solution to that is really research and, you know, uh, showing it to other people and getting their feedback. And, you know, uh, th that's the way I feel like I, I've been able to do it, you know? Yeah. And, and just being like, you know, yeah, as a person to just like open, to lots of different things, open to lots of different cultures. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think as artists, I think we're, we're just all, I, I feel like as artists, we're just like all open to to, to that, you know? And, yeah. and that's like an important quality to have just like going through it. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome, man. Um, so uh, um, Queen, uh, I guess her name is Queen. Um, where do you draw the line? Um, she asked, where do you draw the line in taking reference from other sources for a character design? And I guess what that means to me is like, where do you, from you've gathered all your research and then you're kind of gonna draw, like how do you, do you keep to the reference? Um, you know, do you keep it up sometimes and kind of draw from that? Or do you do all this reference and research and then kind of put it away and just kind of do your own thing. Um, I don't know if you guys have like a consistent thing. What do you think, Jim? I don't know. That's a <sighs> tough one, right? <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, there's a, I think there's a fine line uh, between copying and then and, and, I don't know, use it, use just as a reference. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, <clears throat> I, I use a lot of uh, the, those, uh, poses from the photo reference. Sometimes I ch you know, change the, the posture a little bit, you know, to, yeah. to make it better. So mm -hmm. you, you use uh, the photo as, a, as, it, as it is, exactly as it is. It's, 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 when you put, when you draw exact three cup, try to copy the exact pose as a photo mm -hmm. and, and it, it's it looks some many cases it looks uh, very steep yeah. so you have to put more you know uh i don't know more yeah. uh the uh caricature yeah you more exaggerate more yep so yeah. caricature more yep so, yeah. So when you see the final uh, images between the photo reference and the final drawings, mm -hmm. it's very different. But mm -hmm. yeah. I started with this, but uh, it it comes out really different. Right. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. And I remember as much as uh, the, the reference. 
if you're not uh, the familiar with the, what the, a lot of the animals, I never drawn those animals before, but I had to design it. So I, I had to use a lot of uh, those references. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so use as much as reference. Yeah, that's fine. But unless, you know, you, unless you don't copy the, the yeah. Right, right. That, that's, a, that's a great, I mean, I, I would be remiss to ask this, but like you guys both worked on Zootopia. How do you guys take the animal reference and um, kind of convert them into a character, an animated character? Like Jin, Shun, you guys did both um, work on, on um, Zootopia. How do you even wrap your brain around, okay, here's Shakira as a gazelle. <laughs> uh, how am I going to translate that into this character in Zootopia? I, I don't even know, like, what. I think it was really, 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 like, I really didn't want that assignment. <laughs> Corey, I thought Corey was going to give me, like, a cute dog or some fox or a rabbit, you know, something that I was like, okay. That makes sense, but you're gonna do like a sexy Shakira like kind of character. You're like really pushing my line of like <laughs> pushing it to the edge of the believability, and then you're making a gazelle. I was like, you're basically wanting me to design the sexy gazelle. Of, oh man, that's gonna be hard because it's like you know their body proportions are different. Imagine a gazelle on his legs. On uh, two uh, two uh, feet, that is like the opposite of Sexy. like of, of what um you know uh, a version <laughs> of uh, what sexiness uh, is to the directors or what they would want. You know, I mean, there are people with that kind of shape that could be sexy too. I'm not saying that that you know I'm not completely throwing that out there, but uh, you know that. Dude, that oh was my kinda god. Like, so it was, it was really hard. Like so how did, sorry, man. I hate you. No, but I love you. <laughs> how did you how did so, okay, so this is an assignment you get, it's really challenging. How it's do you was challenging. how do you how do you approach that? Um you, you so, go like two hundred percent. You go this is you just go you go two hundred percent and you try to go you try to you try to do it. You you go even further. So you you know, get the reference for beat. Like, I think at the time they're kind of figuring out if it was Shakira or these other um, singers. So I just went, I'd got a lot of their references where they're doing the dance posing stuff too, mm -hmm. singing stuff too. Um, and then, um, you know, and then, you know, also they, uh, like th there's all these uh, photos on Google of them coming out of the airport or just like in casual clothes. Cause so, so I would get the, get, look at those and then just kind of, you know, go off of that, you know, and, um, you know, and then you try to like make it as, um, you know, uh, I was trying to write a line of where it feels wholesome, but also very attractive, you know, uh, you know, it's, it speaks, it's has like, uh, that kind of quality that the directors are looking for. Yeah. Um, and at the, at the end of the day, when I look at the artwork, I feel sort of like proud that I did it too. So there's all these like little factors and all that stuff as you're drawing, you're like, no, 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 that I don't feel good about that. <laughs> or no, 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 like uh, maybe that's too much on the board. Or, or no, she and you, you know, you're not, you're not pushing yourself enough. So, and then you try to do the best that you can and then just see where it lands. And usually, uh, um, you know, I was always thinking like, well, if I can't do it, like, you know, maybe Corey or somebody else will take a right. hack at right. it. But I'll, I'll do my best to throw it up there. And, uh, you know, they seem to genuinely like, like the zone where I was at. Um, but it's very, yeah, yeah, those like that particular assignment was really hard. The tiger one was really hard because I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's another like kind of like sexualized kind of dancer with like, you know, leather i think it was leather pants i think i was like man i really want to do the rabbit ones with the t-shirt and pants <laughs> but uh, all right i'm gonna go like as much you know I'll do my best you know uh but it's it's interesting because it, 
you know, dancers, they're like, you know, they have these graceful lines. Ballet dancers are just dancers themselves and they create these be beautiful graphic lines. Yeah. Uh, um, and to have a tiger do that um, was, uh, was pretty interesting. Yeah. And uh, hopefully people liked it in the movie. Um, and I, I did try to uh, do my best with it. Um, um, yeah, it's it hard. I, I mean, those, dude, um, everyone's seen those drawings and they are amazing. So I don't know how you uh, kind of overcame that um, anxiety, but like, man, you did it. And those tiger drawings, you don't even question it. I, I look at those drawings and I'm like, well. There, there's oh, some yeah. where Byron wanted like this um, circus thing, you know, the Cirque du Soleil, like yeah. skin tight colored, like, so there's some <laughs> I didn't even put online that were like Victor <laughs> Soleil, you know, versions of Sha you know, that Shakira character, Gazelle character. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that was interesting too. Yeah. My God. Um, and but you did it, man. <laughs> Those are amazing. I don't know if that's helpful. I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, okay. you know what? I, I think that's just hard. It was hard. That was a hard one. You know what? Um, in Jin and Shiyun, I think that's important to hear. Just kind of like you get cast an assignment and you're like, how the heck am I going to make this even work? Like, this is so crazy to me. But um, I'm sure both of you at some point have like dug deep and just be like, okay, this is out of my league, but I'm going to like dig into whatever you had to dig into, like being inspired by Mill Call or be inspired by Shakira backup dancers or anything like that. And then, you know, you come out of it of just kind of like something that you've never done before. Yeah. Um, you have to be open to it. You have to be completely open, open-minded. So when the tiger dancers are doing those dance poses, you and your mind or in my heart, I'm actually doing those poses. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta you gotta just own it like <laughs> as much as you can thank god there's no one there like uh filming me or something but uh, like for my drawings i try to like put myself in those poses so i could feel where the weight is and stuff so um, yeah it was fun so if if um if your wife walks in and you're you're kind of like um just in shorts um you kind of have to do that you know? Yeah. That's awesome, man. I love that, dude. That's amazing. I love that. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but anyway, and, and let me know how you guys are doing. Please flag me if you guys need to you need, you need head out soon. Um, we got just a few more. Um, I think uh, the user, uh, Devaney, <clears throat> uh, he or she asks, um, how do you avoid making repetitive shapes for every character design that you do um, show by show, um, making them look distinct. And to me, pretty much, how do you basically keep from repeating yourself from show to show? Oh, wait, I think, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but um, I think some people wanted to ask Jin the same question. Oh, oh me? The, the, the question about the animals. Oh. Go for it, Jin. Yes, please. Sorry. I want. I want. I want to hear Jin too. <laughs> <laughs> animals? Oh, uh, you mean Zootopia animals? Yes. Um, uh, could you repeat yeah. the question, Bobby? And then. Uh, on the animal stuff. Yeah, on that, like the question uh, I asked yeah, for. I, I worked on. I worked on uh, Zootopia very early on. Uh, it was a different title. And uh, I think I believe uh, at the time uh, the director uh, wanted, they already kind of wanted to, uh, what they want. I mean, the, they know what they want. And uh, they wanted to do uh, like a classic Disney, uh, the, those, what, what do you call that? The, those uh, humanized, uh, the and animal. And the Yes. Yeah. yeah. Those, you know, like a Robin Hood, you know, yeah. those the movies. Mm -hmm. So they already, we didn't, so I think I can, I say we didn't invent those, uh, you know, the designs, uh, Zootopia uh, uh, designs like uh, mm -hmm. we never seen before, you know, mm -hmm. it's already, it's, uh, it's a little, little different, but the 
basic is as you know is there. It's like a, a, a Robin Hood kind of uh, uh, animals. Right? Yeah. So yeah, uh, but so with, so um, actually, I I really had fun just because uh, I'd never done that before. Mm. You know, so I, but uh, I love those uh, the classic you know Disney designs, and I just uh, you know uh, I just had fun. Yeah, the, I remember great these you know, styles. You know. I remember Jin. We would geek out about how um, little design nerd things of like how Milt Call solved uh, Milt Call, how he solved a design for the muzzle of um, Robin Hood, you mm -hmm. know, and we would look at it and geek out about it and go, how did he do this? Um, but it was just kind of like that, you know, design language kind of stuff was fun to sort yeah. of explore. It was already there. So yeah, all the, all the you know, the principles yeah. of designing those, uh, the, the animals, yeah. is already made car and then other people, they already, you know, set it up, and then we just put the. I had to just put the another animals in in that the design and the, the visual uh, you know elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, but uh, um, Jin, when you uh, did that or early exploration, what was difficult about um, anthropomorphizing the animals to a um, human? kind of like, you know, balance for you? Um, or was it just kind of easy? Um, you just kind of like... Uh, no, it's, it's like a... a I try to avoid the, avoid the you know, t stereotypical, you know, yeah. Yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just do something different. Trying to. It's not always successful because you know I I I've heard some criticism of uh, the uh, about the, what I did. As, uh, some some people, I put my uh, drawings I designed uh, 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 my designed on the website, and then some people criticized. Oh, this look like a, some you know Rapunzel. You know, so it look like a. Moana characters, but uh, some people like it. Oh, it looks like the same, uh, you know, things like that. But I, I get it. I get it. I try, even though I'm trying hard to, not to, you know, make it same, not, not repeat myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. But still, there's a still. I, I, I think I have some still, you know, have some mannerism, you know, I. But it for it is for me it's my duty as as an animator. I I I'm, I mean the, as a character designer, yeah. you have to always keep fighting. Uh, oh yeah, to be not falling to the uh, mannerism. But it is it is really hard if you keep just doing this for uh, years and then you designs hundreds, you know. Characters designs, you know, yeah. characters, but it is really, really challenging to make all the characters uh, unique and then, you know, different, different from each other. Yeah. So, but there's no other way. You have to just to keep trying to, you know, yeah. keep that not, uh, not repeating. Right. Well, that's a great segue into, I was just going to ask, <clears throat> like how, um, what steps do you take, Jin, of like, how do you, and, and Chiyun as well, of like, how do you avoid film after film of just kind of, how do you avoid doing the same thing that you've done um, before and making it, a, a character seem different from what you've done before in the last film, making them look distinct and how do you, what, what sort of measures do you guys think you do to keep from repeating yourself? Uh, it's kind of like the uh, reference thing, you know. Yeah. Also just uh, <laughs> keeping an uh, open mind uh, to all lots of different uh, influences. Uh, I have Instagram and 
try to look at lots of different art and sometimes you kind of get suggestions too so um mm -hmm. you know like fashion and like photography and just uh um I, sorry the kids here <laughs> um okay. my daughter's here <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah uh and uh i look at these um walking videos i just recently got into that because i'm in a uh, pandemic mode and uh you hear, there's so many different like just i actually like want to go visit korea for some reason <laughs> I love the food there, and I watch these walking videos of just this guy walking for two hours in the streets of uh, like Hongdae or like in Seoul. And then there's so many, you know, I used to think Korean people looked a certain way. Man, there's just, there's just so many different types of faces and just even that, even people that are just Korean. And so uh, you, can, you can download the video and you can pause it and then you go, oh, I, you know, that looks like a cool drawing. That's a cool design. So uh, I, I try to, you know, try to get a lot of influences uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and be open and just like soak in things and, yeah. you know, try to travel as much as I can, if I can. And, um, you know, like look at people um, uh, and, and hopefully like all that somehow kind of goes into like what I'm doing, hopefully like uh makes me conscious of um those differences so when i'm drawing i'm like oh like i'm gonna try something i kind of didn't do hopefully but it's hard it's very hard uh so sheen are you less about are you saying does that mean you're less about style nowadays or you're more about like um like culture I, I, i'm trying to figure out my style man i don't know if i have a style like <laughs> <laughs> uh you know i, I don't i you know I, I don't work at disney anymore too so you know part of that like uh you know uh this pandemic I, I, i'm trying to think about my identity as an artist and i'm still trying to figure it out man i'm trying to figure out like what hey man we're all doing that <laughs> what i want to say like um it's it's a big thing so uh, i don't really have an answer for that like hopefully like whoever i'm working for they're they're liking what i'm doing but uh to be honest i'm i'm, I'm trying to fi i'm trying to figure that out um and i think can it's I, really important can i ask you a loaded question Shun? like what are what are some of the things you think that you would want to say in your art um or aspire to say like moving forward i mean uh you know part of the reason i wanted to be part of this was uh like diversity inclusion uh i'm kind of more of a progressive type person so i want uh i just want people to know that uh to be kinder uh to other people that don't look like them because you know i i don't look like probably a lot of other people um and so i like that as a character designer you kind of design lots of different things yeah and then it makes you open to a lot of different like people look very differently and there's a lot of shows that are like, you know, the different looking uh, type people or animals or aliens or anything like that. So right. Um, right. I want to do, I guess I want to do more like stories to where like, um, um, it's more about that sort of thing of like, you know, that uh, people could be empathized with people that look different from them and still like kind of care about their journeys. So um uh, yeah that, that oh, that's for, for now that, I, that's where i'm at now yeah yeah that's awesome uh jen um closing remarks i think um man this was amazing um and jen we all look up to you and you set a huge example of just like excellence and kind of character design um i just wanted to ask you kind of, you know, in animation, in the animation industry, what would you kind of like to see more of in terms of like, whether it's character design or animation or story, or what do you, um, what are you kind of looking forward to, uh, like, you know, us, everyone working in the future of animation of like, what would you like to see more of? What do you think? Well, um, well, I'm, I think, uh, uh, now it's uh 
so many platform. Yeah. So what the animators or animation artists can show their uh, work. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I think it's a, it's it's inevitable to all. It's more variety of you know. Yeah. The of the films, diff, many different kind of different designs, different stories mm -hmm. diff, from different world. Mm -hmm. Although all of the world is 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 we can I think we see more is coming. Yeah. So I, I think that's that's great. Yeah. That's great. And then uh, even as a character designer, I, I just uh, I had more chance to work on so many different kind of uh, the movies. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm really happy. To, mm -hmm. to uh, be what uh, I am uh, right now, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then for the for the young, you know, coming coming artist, you know. Yeah. Young artist. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I guess we can end on that, guys. Um, I mean, I know we touched on it a little bit in portfolios and that kind of stuff, but like, if there's a a, a lot of uh, the attendees are trying to you know we're, we're all aspiring artists making character design portfolios if there's any uh sort of you know parting words that you'd want to say for something to look uh getting into character design um that we can kind of leave with while we're hustling away every night uh from luminaries like yourselves um sheen what do you think Imagine I'm a, imagine. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I know it's like, a, a, it's it's tough, uh, like uh, it's a tough world. It's hard to, uh, it's very competitive. Animation's even more competitive, even more now with all these schools and just, uh, uh, and there's so many limited spots within the studios and um, uh, you kind of, it's, it's really, I, I could see people feeling like I need, I need to make it into the studio in order to feel like I'm an artist. Um, and so their identity, I was like that, you know, I, I guess I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I'm speaking for myself. Like I felt like I needed to be inside this, this animation studio to really show everybody that I'm an artist. And, um, you know, I, now I'm realizing that's like, you know, I understand where that's coming from, but I feel like I, your identity shouldn't, you shouldn't expect the, your identity just to be wrapped up with like this whole animation thing. It's like, um, like a lot of the old guys, the old school guys, like, uh, like Mill Collin, those guys, or Mark Davis, they always thought of themselves as artists first that do animation as a job. It's still a job um, just because you didn't get that position or just get into that spot. Um, maybe it's easier to say after, but I, I, I feel that even more now. It's just like, uh, you know, just kind of separate those two things. And when I graduated from CalArts, that was the critique actually I got from Courtney uh, Cole uh, on my senior year <laughs> review. I, I guess my work kind of looked like I was trying to get into the studio so hard. And he said to me that you should kind of just do your own do your own art for its own sake and now i'm realizing like oh how important that is uh, uh and i didn't understand it at that time because i was like i gotta pay my bills uh i gotta <laughs> i got i just want to leave my house i don't live my parents <laughs> like i want to be my own person so uh this is that part of it so i just uh I, but it's coming back to me now uh, and I, I think that's really important uh, that, you know, you don't get wrap up your identity as an artist by your career. I just feel like that's a, you know, you can be a great artist, even if you don't work in like these studios, even if they, you know, sometimes you get these like career reviews where they're like, yeah, you need to work on this, you need to work on that. It's like, well, it, that's kind of just a job, you know, like that's just like, you know, a studio is always going to have their own way of, you know, make, doing these films and then, you know, it's valid what they want. Like they, they need certain things in order for the production to happen. 
but um, I, I feel like it's always important to just kind of keep that other side of just doing art for art's sake. So uh, right. hopefully that's that's helpful. Uh, yeah. Even though I know it's like you know important to get get the job to to yeah. um, get a career, pay right. for expenses. Right. Well, you know, uh, Shane, and you can speak to this too. I think that what that what that speaks to is like. It helps encourage people to have their own personal voice in their own portfolio, right? Yeah, so yeah. What you talked about of just kind of like trying to provide designs that look like you're trying to get into a studio. Yeah. Um, I, I'll try to always encourage students to just kind of like be, uh, just kind of um, tell their own personal stories based on the culture, based on their upbringing. And so, yeah. if it means a lot to them, um, it might mean a lot to art directors, directors looking at their portfolios. Cause you, cause you'd kind of do this job, like you're drawing for somebody else. Right? That's part of it. That's, that's why you're getting paid. You're, you're, yeah. So it's almost like, uh, like you almost don't have an opinion. <laughs> like, you know, the drawing doesn't, it's kind of meaningless unless there's a story attached to it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to like, like I was saying, I'm trying to figure out uh, like who I am as an identity, as an artist. Mm -hmm. So I think part of that is just like doing, uh, I think it's important to, even if it's, you can, you can separate those things, like the career thing. And then you can, you can always just do your art for your own sake without any rules uh, with, with your own stories. Mm -hmm. uh, there's space for both of them and they both like kind of feed each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, dude. I think there's a, there's a way to compromise those things. There's my work and my personal artwork. Yeah. I think yeah. that she, I remember she and you did uh, when you work on the, uh, you know, uh, Picro 6, you did yeah. the drawing, uh, the hero is, uh, he's uh, leaning over uh, the, the kind of aquarium or the glass boxes and then there is a bug inside the the glass box and then and then hero his uh, his left foot is scratching his uh, the other foot oh yeah. <laughs> do you remember, do you remember, remember that drawing yeah 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 that was, that's just what i do that's yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you, you, you said you explained that about the drawings. Oh, I want to put uh, my e personal experience onto this character, you know. I think and so. I, I, I think that is the, the very important thing that you know. And then just personalize your uh, designs, you know. So so that makes uh, these drawings. Even though these these designs uh, is uh, you know for for the movie, it's not not just for your personal artwork. But right. still it, it's very it becomes very meaningful, right? Right. Yeah. So I think that's that's uh, that's. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I I I, I think if you could do. Um, Looking back at that now, that the hero stuff, I think was like the story of it was like kind of close to me because it's like, I, I was trying to, that was my way of empathizing and I was like kind of projecting like when I was growing up and uh, the things I would be into. Um, oh yeah, I hope there's more stories like that. But that was a fun project to be on because you could kind of, kind of showcase that, put yourself into that. I remember that. Do the tiger thing too. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, even uh, I did that too. One, uh, the one character, uh, the in, uh, Tangled, the king character, uh, the Rapunzel's father, is holding uh, the young, uh, just born uh, girl, uh, Rapunzel. He's holding and looking at her. And then I kind of, you know, I, I try to remember the, what I felt uh, when I first hold, uh, first time, you know, hold my daughter, my aunt, and then try to, you know, to remember that uh, that feeling, and then try to put 
those emotions into the my drawing. So those those things are you know these are very similar to what she did on the Bicro six, and then I did on my uh, Tangled. So yeah, I think uh, that that is a uh, that makes me the work is not just work, you know. So yeah. 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 And Jin, would you say that's something that's beautiful, man, by the way, I'd never heard that story before and I almost cried. Uh, is that something that you would like to even that you respond to like in character design portfolios that you see of just kind of like a sense of like a personal experience? What do you think? Oh yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's uh that can make a huge difference, actually. Yeah, it is. You know, I, you know, when you draw something, something you know, is so different. It could be so, you know, better than what you, you know, when you draw something you don't know. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did we all get that from Len Keen or? Was, is that how that works? Yes, <laughs> yes. I got that from Glenkin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to ask uh, both you and Jin uh, and Shun of like what your favorite working experience was, but um, I knew you guys were going to say Glenkin on either Tangled or Over the Moon. But um, but uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's great, guys. Uh, well, I mean, if if. You know, if everyone's okay, it's like one ten. Right. Thank you guys for staying so long. We started at eleven. Yeah, I'm hungry. Gosh, I'm... thank you guys so much, Jin, Chiyun. Thank you for your time. Um, I know it was a lot to ask of you guys, but it was great catching up. Um, I'm so happy that everyone got to hear your insights on character design, and and hopefully, I'm sorry, there were like. 83 questions in the q a i didn't I, i'm sorry i couldn't get to them and wow uh but i <laughs> i'm so sorry i i, I just uh, maybe next time <laughs> sometime soon but uh, um apologies again for the q a but um thank you guys again great catching up with you great seeing you guys i hope you guys have a, um an amazing rest of 2020 this is a great day um, for more reasons than one. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Thank you guys. I'm honored um, to have you guys. And, and it was great catching up, laughing about silly design stuff sometimes in our experience. Thanks, is, uh, yeah. I had a lot of fun. Thank you for setting this yeah. up. Of course. Of course, man. You guys are awesome, man. Yeah. It was just kind of like a, a cool lunch that we had. And, it, you know, a thousand people got to join in. Uh, but uh, I miss you guys a ton. I miss working with you guys. And um, good luck in the in 2021. Whatever you're doing, Jin, you're at Disney. She and you're at and Netflix. And and uh, you know, hope our paths uh, cross again soon in the new year. Thank you guys, everybody, for coming. Thank you, for everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Jin, Shun, thank you guys so much. See ya. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye. Yeah.